Hi, I'm Billy Gwaltney, and this is the CYA Podcast. This show is for the physician who understands the importance of protecting everything you've worked so hard to achieve. Each week, I'll bring you tips and advice to help you cut through the clutter and misinformation and show you exactly what you need to preserve your income and way of life. If you're ready to achieve the peace of mind that only financial security can bring, let's get started. Welcome to today's episode of the Cover Your Assets podcast. This is Billy Gwaltney, your host. And as always, I'm really happy to be with you today. We're going to cover in this podcast episode my initial conversation with a female trainee, resident or fellow, somewhere in the country who has reached out and received a spreadsheet with discounted rates with the top four insurance companies that offer true specialty on occupation disability coverage. They're still in training and uh, they have the spreadsheet and are now interested in getting some questions answered, learning more about the terms and just figuring out, number one, what the best option is for them and if they need to do it at all, if they're okay working with me, those, those kinds of questions. So in starting out this conversation, I start usually with uh, making sure that we answer any questions that they have, and they usually just kind of want to start at the top of the spreadsheet and work their way down and and go through some of the key points and highlights. So I start with a quick background of who I am. I specialize in disability coverage for physicians. It's what I do morning, noon, and night. For some reason, I love it. And I work with, I'm not sure why, but I do, I work with probably 1,600 or so physicians around the country. That's growing pretty rapidly. And I do end up helping most clients with life insurance as well. But the primary focus, at least initially, is on this disability coverage. I'm an independent broker, and that's important because none of the companies that I represent or broker or have clients with pay my light bill or pay my rent. I don't answer to them from a, that kind of standpoint. They're on this spreadsheet because they perform, because their contract is solid, the definitions are strong, and we're going to go through what makes that the case. Probably 90% of these terms are the same with all four. These are really, really good. Uh, most independent brokers can access probably, I don't know, 70 or 75 insurance companies. These are the only four that we represent that I broker because they're the only four that that have the strongest definitions. Outside of these four, it gets muddy very fast. And so it's key. I would love to work with you, but whoever you work with, make sure you stick with one of these four. The key terms, and we, we start out, the top of the spreadsheet has an initial benefit of 5,000 per month. Uh, that's what they'll, these top companies will allow trainees to purchase. The benefit is non-taxable. So if you become disabled, receive 5,000, you don't owe the state or federal government any of that. You can spend all five. We include an example often of $2,500 a month with a couple of the companies just so you can see a lower amount. There's no law or rule that says you have to start at $5,000. So we show a lower number uh, in case for budget reasons and someone has, usually the people that are interested in that would be if they still have a few years left of training and they want to secure coverage, they want to lock in their their good health now and lock in the discount, but they also want to keep the cost uh, as low as possible. And so that's an idea to consider. The elimination period of 90 or 180 days is how long you self-insure from the date of a disability until the first check shows up. So if someone's disabled on January 1st, they get a check, their first check in either April, if they have a 90-day elimination, or in July, if they have a 180-day elimination. The longer you're willing to wait, the lower the cost. And you'll see the different rates at the bottom of the spreadsheet with both elimination periods. The benefit period typically is to age 65. Uh, You could get a benefit period to 67 or 70. It costs more for that. The vast majority of our clients prefer to just default to 65. So that's why we put that there. Uh, The definition of disability, this is what starts to separate these four from everybody else from a contract language standpoint. True specialty, own occupation, That definition of disability means two things. One, it means that if an illness or injury prevents you from performing the material duties of your specific occupation, then you're totally disabled. And two, there's no penalty for income you later earn doing a different job. Okay. Both of those have to be there for the true specialty on occupation definition. The occupation engaged at the time of claim is vital. That's verified through the CPT codes. So if you've streamlined your 
duties to five or six duties that you do over and over and over with a goal of being the best ever, then those are, the, if you can't do the material parts of those handful of duties, then you're totally disabled. You could then go do one of the 20, 30, or 50 other duties that you may have uh, been exposed to in training or be qualified to do, and that would be considered a separate occupation. So you could go teach, consult, write a book, do whatever you want to do, make an unlimited income doing that, and there's no penalty to your benefit. That definition is the best available. It's really important outside of these four, outside of this top-tier coverage, and especially with employer policies or association policies, even if they call it specialty-specific, what they mean by that is very different than what we just discussed. What they mean by that typically at best is that a Google search of MD of medical doctor duties reveals a list of 50 things you could do. So yes, you can't do the handful that you've been specifically trained to do as a fellow, for example, but uh, you're still qualified to go do about 45 other duties. So go figure that out and you're not totally disabled. So what they mean by that is very different. What these four contracts mean is the the duties engaged at the time of claim. That's a big deal. Next in the on the spreadsheet is what's called the total future insurability. That's the ability to increase coverage once you become an attending as your income grows. Most of our clients want to increase coverage to keep pace with where their income is. There's a formula that the top companies use to calculate how much coverage you can purchase based on your income. They won't give somebody twenty or 30000 a month of coverage just because they want to pay for it. They really don't want you overinsured if they can help it. Uh, and so uh, we run those numbers when clients are ready to do that, and then they can access as much or as little of that as they want. If it's done properly, it's kind of like flipping a switch. You don't have to update any medical screening, and you access the trainee discounts on everything you buy up to the full cap. And whatever you purchase that isn't, that is below that full cap of twenty or 30000 that remaining amount stays available through the policy to access later as your career continues to grow and as your income continues to expand. So it's usually kind of some steps clients take. We rarely have somebody go from five to 20,000 in one step, uh, although we do sometimes, but it's usually kind of a piecemeal five to 10,000 or 12,000, then up to 17 or 18, and then up to 20 or 25 or whatever. So you're able to do that and you don't have to be as healthy then and you always get the trainee discount when you do it. It's important. Each company has their own way of, of doing that depending on, you know, if there's a, a, a three-year calculation requirement and how the cost is determined. But we can talk about that in more detail for your particular situation. The next on the spreadsheet is what's called the enhanced residual benefit. That's partial disability. It pays if you can do your specific duties at the time of claim part-time, but not full-time. So an illness or injury prevents you from doing it full-time, but you can still do it some, or those duties sometimes. And so there's a minimum income loss required to activate that benefit. It's either 15 or 20%, depending on the company you pick. You'll see that on the spreadsheet. Uh, lower is better. You'd rather have 15 than 20% although 20% is still really strong uh, in the industry average, actually. So that's a vital feature to have. Next on the spreadsheet is equally important, the recovery benefit. That pays if you medically recover from a disability and return to work. But when you return to work, your income does not recover to what it used to be. And that happens a lot. We have clients that have collected for over a decade from a recovery benefit. It's very possible for someone to be medically cleared to go back to work but when they go back to work, their income does not reach the same level it was before they were disabled. They're just not as productive from an economic standpoint. And so their income may never reach the same level. And it's important to have that. The, the recovery benefits probably the most important rider or benefit in this policy that most people have never heard of. It does get overlooked, but at time of claim, trust me, you're going to want that on there. And it's included with all these that we show. Again, outside of these four, that gets muddy very quick. Next on the spreadsheet is what's called a psychiatric benefit. That pays for disabilities related to depression, anxiety, and addiction. And Guardian could potentially pay benefits for that to age 65, depending on your specialty. If you're anesthesiology, emergency medicine, or pain medicine, they, do not, they, they limit that to two years. 
but uh, there may be one or two others, but pretty much the rest can have up to age 65. It is state dependent. Certain states only allow a two-year benefit on their contract, but Guardian is kind of known for the psychiatric benefit to age 65. Emeritus offers it either for two years or five years, depending on the specialty. Mass Mutual is two years per occurrence, and then principal is two years for the life of the policy. They do have a, a psychiatric benefit option to age 65. Most of our clients look at the two years. We've not seen a claim go beyond two years. Now, that's anecdotal. It doesn't mean it can't happen. Uh, one of the catches is that during the medical screening, if someone's been treated for mild depression or anxiety or ADHD or anything, then they're going to exclude that likely uh, from the policy, in particular guardian. And so that might be one of the reasons we just haven't seen that be as big a deal. But just something to think about, food for thought to factor into your decision. Happy to discuss that in more detail if you would like. Emeritus has a couple of perks that they offer in most states, and I want to cover those here. Um, Non-disabling injury benefit, they will pay up to 50% of your policy benefit with a cap of $3,000 per occurrence towards any medical treatment for minor injuries. And they pay it even if your health insurance covers it all. So if you ever go to urgent care, get stitches or x-rays from you know hiking or working out, whatever kind of injury you have, even chiropractic care, they're going to pay you the medical cost of that treatment, even if your health insurance pays it all. So you can make a profit on your minor injury. They offer that as a perk. You're not paying an extra fee for that. They can't uh, raise your rate. They can't exclude the injured area. There's really no downside to it other than filling out the, the quick form. I've claimed it before on my policy with them. We have clients that have collected multiple times from this, and it's just a feature or perk that, that a lot of people want to know about. Good health benefit is another perk where every year somebody has a policy with emeritus and is not disabled, which is how they define good health. They're going to drop the elimination period by two days. So if you have a 90-day elimination period in 15 years, you would have a 60-day elimination period. Or if you have a 180, it'd be 150. An actuary would say that's significant. You're going to get an extra check and you're going to get paid quicker. So uh, over time, that adds up. Again, just something to factor in. The last row on the spreadsheet is uh, what's called a cost of living adjustment or COLA rider that you opt into if you want it at the beginning when you purchase your policy. It's an inflation factor that increases your benefit once you're disabled in order to keep pace with inflation. Again, you pay for it up front. At the time of claim, whatever your benefit is, you're going to get that for 12 months. And then in the 13th month, they're going to bump it up usually by 3%. Sometimes it floats. Each company calculates a little bit different, either a floating rate based on the consumer price index. Uh, some compound it, some are simple interest. The point is to just add some more benefit to help you keep pace with what it costs to live. And so most of those calculations have done that historically. It's not required to have that on your policy. So if you're looking at this spreadsheet, down at the bottom of the spreadsheet, you'll see rates for 180-day elimination and 90-day elimination with and without the cost of living on there. So you mix and match and find the one you want. If you're a female, what's important to understand is that in general, as we stand now, this podcast being recorded in 2022... I'll up, do my best to update it if this changes, but females are paying more than males for disability coverage. A couple of thoughts on that. Number one, uh, females get disabled more frequently, statistically speaking, and stay disabled longer, and that's why they females cost more. Now, you're going to outlive me, us, males, by a pretty wide margin, and so your life insurance is going to be cheaper. Okay, so over the course of your life, it's going to kind of come out in the wash. When you pay for your life insurance, your male counterpart's going to pay more for the same thing, while on the disability coverage, you're paying more for the same thing. If you're in training, you just tend to feel that quicker because budgets are tight and you're thinking about disability coverage, which you should be as a priority over life insurance. But down the road, life insurance will be something that you think about and, and you'll pay less there. The other thing is that there's still ways to get discounts down and get the rate down to where it's in the ballpark of what's called a gender neutral rate, which is uh, you may if you Googled anything about disability coverage, you'll see something about gender neutral rates for females or unisex rates for females. And they're just not available very frequently. They're very sporadic, especially with these top contracts, Mass Mutual, Guardian, Emeritus, and Principal. <laughs> 
Mass Mutual and Guardian and Principal do not offer them. Emeritus offers them in a couple of situations, but later this year, those are going away. So they're just very difficult to get. I would urge you not to miss the forest for the trees and go try to get a gender neutral rate with a contract that's inferior to the top contracts, okay? The difference in cost likely, you know, is probably not going to keep you from retiring or sending your kids to the school you want them to go to. Yes, it's more expensive, but there are other ways to get the discounts or the rates down. Emeritus offers a guaranteed renewable rate that takes a 20 or 30% training discount and adds about 15% to that. So you could be at 45% of a discount with a female rate. That's really close to most gender neutral rates. So there are ways to be creative with that. We help our clients do that to, to keep the rate down, recognizing that females are paying more. But again, on the life insurance, you're going to pay less. So I don't want you to miss the forest for the trees on that. The streamlined medical screening, uh, the last thing about the discounts, I want to go back. Each company comes up with their own discounts, okay? And those are driven primarily by their desire for growth, much more so than their the quality of their contract. And so if you're looking at a spreadsheet and you see one that's less expensive, it's because your specialty is more attractive to that particular company and they have a bigger discount. And so it's totally okay to pick the cheapest one if you want to, as long as you're within these four and you're assuming you're looking at the spreadsheet I sent you um, and it has those key definitions, then you're not making a mistake. I want to make sure that's clear. The streamlined medical screening, it is easier for trainees because they waive the insurance physical. You don't have to get the lab work done. You don't have to see your doctor or a nurse. They're still medically screening you. They're just doing it electronically and over the phone. You fill out, uh, our clients fill out a, a DocuSign intake form electronically that's really quick, and they e-sign an application electronically, and then do a phone call with an underwriter where they go over, they have about 20 or 25 medical questions they go through for everybody. And that's it. So your involvement in that is less than a half hour. It's all remote. Process from start to finish can take, you know, one week to eight weeks. Uh, it can take a little while. But your involvement in that is really short. Everything's delivered electronically. We keep you posted along the way. And so it's never been this easy to get the medical screening completed. The last thing that I want to cover is that your broker gets compensated from the premium you pay. Okay. It's built into the policy. So you don't pay me or your broker. Hopefully it's me, but whoever your broker is, you don't pay them an extra fee. Okay. And if you go direct, like if you said, okay, I see the rate uh, for with Billy. What if I call Mass Mutual Direct? Would I get it cheaper? The answer is no. There has to be a broker. They, my understanding is if you call in to, to part, purchase a policy, they're going to send you to me or someone like me because there has to be a broker on the application. Your broker, I get a small piece of the premium you pay for the life of the policy. Okay. And that is the, designed with the goal to be for me to do everything I can to try to keep you happy for the long term. Okay, and that's the role of your broker. Your broker does matter. Okay, it's important to work with a specialist over a generalist. I've done other podcasts on this. You could find disability coverage is weird. It's complicated or it can be complicated. It's confusing. It feels like it's very uncertain. If you do it correctly, you can be completely certain with what you have, but you don't want to do it incorrectly and not find out until a claim is filed and there's nothing you can do about it. And so working with a specialist is kind of like getting your knee operated on. If I need knee surgery, I want to go to the girl or guy that's done 2,000 knees, right? Or 3,000 knees. And that's all they do. I'm sure a general surgeon can figure it out. I, I, I work with a lot of general surgeons, but I don't want them figuring it out on my knee. I want the person doing my knee to have done so many of these that it's just, it's, they, they know how to do it and they're going to get it right every single time. And so disability coverage is kind of like that. I'd love for you to work with me, but whoever you work with, make sure it's a specialist that works with thousands of physicians just on disability coverage. And, you know, I help clients with life insurance as well, just because it's so closely related. But the primary focus is disability coverage. If you go with a generalist that's doing retirement planning and budgeting and college funding and all those kind of things, then they're going to be distracted. And, and I'm not saying they're not going to get it right, just like I'm not saying a general surgeon couldn't get a knee right. But I'm just saying your chances have gone down that that's going to happen. And so just uh, it's food for thought. It's your decision. But seeing what I've seen, the other part where your broker matters is 
is just keeping you happy, making sure your address is updated, making sure your coverage is increased when you want it increased and that your questions are answered in as much detail as you need. And then also advocating for you at the time of claim. Obviously, for HIPAA reasons, insurance companies are going to deal with you directly at a claim, but your, your broker can be as involved as you want him or her to be. I usually, for our clients on claim, I sign an extra HIPAA that allows us to talk with the claims people about the situation, and that can move the needle in terms of just advocating, making sure things are getting handled quickly or, or at least timely, uh, more timely. These, these companies are excellent. Don't mishear me. They're really good at what they do. They're really good at paying claims and adjudicating that and going through that process. But your broker can advocate on your behalf and make sure you're getting what you're paid for. And that's important. Use your broker. Um, make sure there's somebody. Don't don't use a 1-800 number. If you go direct and you talk to a person and you call in the next time and it's somebody different, they're still getting paid that fee or that commission. Okay, the, pro- the cost is the cost. This is not like real estate where you can negotiate a better deal without a broker. I tell clients and I would tell you, if you're looking at this spreadsheet that I've sent you, the only way to get these rates any lower is to either have less coverage or have one or more of the absolute vital riders not present, or you have a graded policy that's going to start out cheap and get more expensive over time, which is highly inadvisable for most people. And so just, again, food for thought, your broker does matter. I would be happy to answer additional questions. I just wanted to run through what I typically cover and is specific for females because of the pricing based on gender rates or and how discounts are structured. Please feel free to reach out, uh, text me, or call me anytime to arrange a a more detailed conversation. My number is 704-270-2376. Again, that's 704-270-2376. We'd be happy to discuss your situation anytime. Until we meet again, this is Billy Gwaltney. Thank you, as always, for your time. This is the PodcastFactory.com.